So here to Dialogue Semiconductor. So who are you? Hi, I'm uh, Charles Limenart, Dialogue Semiconductor. So what um, are you showing here? Yeah, this is uh, a little toy we have made. Um, it's, a, it's a dice demo, and what we uh, actually demonstrate is, uh, is Bluetooth low energy, how low the energy is. And we have uh, made a little app on an, uh, on an iPad. And the dice and this uh, represent something. So we said we're going to do a little game. We, we guess uh, which number you're going to throw. So what, what number do you guess you're going to throw? Four. Four. Okay, I'll put it on four. I press start. And now we have to roll the dice. Uh, I can do it. And we just take the dice, we roll it hard, we wait. Um, we have thrown one, so you lost. Nice. So another question is, how does it know that it's shown one? And it does one. It does one. Nice. So how did this happen? This dice in there, there's a Bluetooth low energy chip solution, a microcontroller. You have to know where it is, so X, Y, and Z sensors, and of course the battery, all in the dice. It's for real? It's for real. And Why do you put it in the glass? You don't want people to look that, inside? This is Barcelona, and yeah. anything <laughs> which fits in a truck will disappear. So nice. uh, we had to, uh, had to do it this way. Um, the solution has only uh, five external components, so it's really uh, high. Yeah, I want to do one more time. Five, press start. You just take that. It's probably really good. Also shows that the solution is reasonably robust. Two, last. Two, and let's check, is it two? Yeah, it's two. It's fantastic. So there's a, what do you call those? Uh, X, Y, Z. XYZ sensor. sensor. That's one. Is that uh, what is that? XYZ sensor. Oh, that's just like in a mobile phone that it knows your direction if you play a game. So is it kind of like an accelerometer? That's not from us. Yeah, accelerometer. So this accelerometer and you do the Bluetooth. Yeah, and the microcontroller you need for that, and a battery, and a print circuit board, and, and all the components around it. So you get an idea how big it is. So the Bluetooth, what is it? ARM? ARM CPU? Uh, yes, we're using yeah. uh, an ARM Cortex M0. M0? Yes. And then uh, what's in the microcontroller? That's the Cortex M0. That's, that's the micro the yeah, so that's the arm. And, yeah. and uh, you said there was Bluetooth, microcontroller and something? A battery. And a battery. You also need How long is the battery in there? Um, we have it in there now half a year. And um, I saw this morning that the battery for this one, because you can read it out on the display, was about 49%. Uh, the other battery we have, because a backup of this in case this one breaks, was at 75%, but I don't know why. <laughs> How do you check the battery? We get, how big it's a uh, battery for an, uh, a hearing aid, so it's a really tiny one. So, so it should last minimum a year in this. And, but the idea is about Bluetooth low energy. The energy levels are so low that it is suitable for wearables. So if you would make, um, I don't know, a, a, a button in a shirt, um, with a bit a bit a bit a bit a battery, then it should last about ten years. For battery. So, ten years, yes, you have Bluetooth in yep. your shirt. What could you do with it in the shirt? This thing, as an example, you can't yeah. switch it off. There's no switches in it. There's no switch, of course. No. It's just so on all the time. This is always on. This is always on. But the sleep modes are so deep, it draws virtually zero. So it draws like micro micro watts um, when it's uh, in deep sleep. And in peak power consumptions, it's, a, it's about 10 and 15 milliwatt. So but how many times can you throw it? Like a few thousand times before it runs out of battery, no, maybe? millions. Millions of yeah, times? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's, that's really a fun game. So somebody needs to sell, sell this. Oh, no, that's just, it's just that to show the technology. That would be good for magician. No. But you can right. do lots of fun things with that. Uh, we, we have here a lot of fun things uh, we did with... Uh, one, one more time. Three last. Yeah. And it is three. Yeah, it's always right. It's always right. It's never gonna be f not right. The only way to make it not right is take the whole solution out, put it out, put it in in a different way, and put it back. And then it will be always the same way wrong. Because nice. it knows what's pointing out. And here at the booth, what else are you showing? Yeah, this is also Bluetooth, but it is also for fun. So one of our groups. Um, one of our groups made a, a light bulb with an LED in it and they wanted us to show that at Mobile World Congress and of course we said no because a light bulb has nothing to do with uh, LED so we refused to bring it so they got very angry and I said what are you going to do? He said, you have to be creative so the guys got creative and they, what they did they have this light bulb and what did the guys do? they also put the same Bluetooth in it and this is of course not a very serious application because you don't need that very low energy in your life. But this is a standard IKEA lamp 
with a plug on it and the light. Um, I can, of course, reset the demo. The drawback of this kind of demo is that is an iPad. Why is the iPad confused? Now I'll turn it around. I don't care. Yep. Move it back. Here I have the in the iPad the app, and then I can switch the light off or on via Bluetooth. Of course, that's the sync, but I, of course I can also nice dim it via Bluetooth or make an auto put it on auto and to show you. What are you doing? Well, it uses the camera ah. to dim it. Ah, yeah, based automatic, on the, based on how based dark it might be. Yeah. So auto brightness. Yeah, and you can switch it off and so. Nice. And of course, you can do all kind of fun. But this is not a real application. Although you can imagine that if you build a new house, you spend quite a lot of money on getting a cable across the ceiling, then going down and having a light switch. Why do you need a light switch? Why do you need all that cable? Why do you need to go through all the hassle? Of building that is very expensive wow. to do. Um, so there will be no light switches in future houses. If the regulations allow it, yes. So that's the question. Would, that's the you question. You save a lot of money by not. I think so. Switches. You talk about a one dollar uh, chip versus probably a hundred dollars to get it installed in a new house per light switch. This so needs to be law. No more light switching. Yeah, I think so. And just uh, charge your phone. But, but again, this we, we we try this just for fun. This is not something we are promoting really really hard and especially not in uh, mobile world congress so it's just for having Fun. a laugh but having a laugh it's cool yeah it's cool i like it what is there this is a new display technology you know that uh, all the displays we see in ipads and so are all um, on and off so touch yeah but no pressure sensitivity this is a standard uh, windows 8 uh, pc and this is touch sensitive see i press soft and harder, okay. but not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. How many? Ten here. Maximum uh, ten? I, yeah, I have only ten fingers, but I only okay, not eleven. Okay. No, it's limited to ten by Microsoft. Oh yeah, Microsoft. That's Windows 8. They don't want several people to. But you can see, and of course I can move all this. But this is engineering, right? This, this yeah. doesn't tell any. This is not useful for anyone. So let's look to something useful. Yeah. Oh, wrong one. What I have here is, a, is an oil painting. So, let's just choose a, a dirty dark color, a nice brush, like this, not too thick. And now we're gonna, let's say here around we go. Wow. Did you see what I've been doing here? I've done a couple of things. One, make it thinner, make another brush. Let's try one more time. Just put a line. Right. It's black, I add high pressure and I decrease the pressure and I go to this. Can I try? Yeah, I make it a bit thicker, sorry, okay. and make it easier. Uh, so this is the brush you have, so you have to okay. think about what the brush does if you put it, just go anywhere. Yeah, you need to get used to it. But now, now is something more interesting. Because it's pressure sensitive, right? what I can do, let me take uh, white as a color. Uh, yeah, this is good. I'm gonna... The beak, I think it's too small, so I like a bigger beak. But now, I think I want to make it a bit grey. Nice. See what I'm doing? I could do it here and start grey. So I start with a let me take an egg and uh, a different color that, that is really contrasting. So now I've red. I go with a red line here, yeah? So this is a red line. Yeah? Okay. Now 
I don't like this red line anymore. I'm gonna smudge it. Cool. So you have a sensor for that? No, it measures the pressure. And if the pressure is low, it's a line. It's a, it, think about it's a brush, right? So if you, I go, the your sensor is where? It's How? in the display. It's normal. Um, I'll show you. I have. Is this a special display? Yep. Like a modified one, or? Yeah, it needs. A, uh, it's uh, different than the standard display. We have the normal glass plate, but we send uh, infrared light through the glass like this. And it detects when your finger comes, it bounces back in a different way and we can detect that. And therefore the benefit is it's very flat, there's no extra layers, it leaves all the light through. This is normal glass, there's no, no mirror or no um, uh, point where it, is, it gets less. And this is just one application, yeah? true art on the computer, you can really become an artist. But another application you could think about, um, if you play an instrument, a piano for instance, on a computer with a touch screen, it doesn't work very well because it's on or off. If it is pressure sensitive, it is like a modern electric piano. It really sounds like a piano because it's touch sensitive. So there are applications where it becomes really, really useful. So we think this will be really, really big. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, what's over there? Yeah, this is an uh, audio demo. Um, and we try to do beamforming here. Beamforming, so first explain the concept and then I'll show you the, the, de the demo. Um, normally you're in an environment and it's very noisy, so the sound coming from all different ways. You have, let's say, a tablet with a couple of microphones in it and you want to record the sound you were saying. But you have environment noise. Famous people, you have, uh, you get a call for instance and you in the train, somebody's on the train. And you hear all that noise in the environment, really irritating. So what can you do about it? You could make a beam from the microphones towards a certain direction right? and then attenuate the uh, sound around it and you would hear the voice much much better. Now the problem with this is, let's say you have a speaker, a sound bar from under a TV. If you listen to a sound bar, you have all these speakers working together and your ears believe that the sound comes from the back but you see it's coming from the front. But people can understand that because these speakers work together and they're radiating some sound waves to you. But the microphone does the opposite. I am the wave, I'm the talker. The microphone just receives. So how can I make a beam with that? That's the clever bit. What we have done in a solution, just to play around in, in the line of the wearables, we have taken um, a, little, uh, a little toy, and this thing is absolutely filled with, uh, with microphones. So all these little thingies are microphones. Filled with microphones? Yeah, so there's about 12 microphones or so on this one. Okay. It's connected to my uh, solution and with the software I can change which microphones I want. For instance, now I have these two microphones. Okay. Yep. Um, what I want to do, I want to show you, I want to show you a symmetrical solution. I use four microphones. This one, this one, this one and this one. Yeah. They are exactly <laughs> perpendicular to the glasses. Okay. Right? In a normal microphone, it doesn't matter if you turn it or so, it's like a, a ball around it. So if you think four microphones, two pointing that way, two pointing that way, yeah. the sound is very likely in this field. So if I don't have a beam, right, and I put it on like this, it would sound exactly the same And if I put it down upside down. Yes? Okay. Because the sound is like this. If I could make a beam only downwards and I would put it on, then this way you could hear my voice very clearly, but if I put it the other way around, it would look for the voice here and it wouldn't, you, you would barely hear me. Okay. Then I had evidence that the beam would really exist, right? Okay. Now that's what we demonstrate here. So we have a, a little headset. Somebody needs to put on. Oh, let me do this with you. Okay. You want to give this a try? All right. Let's hear, let's hear it. So you have to tell me. I switched the headset off. This is an, uh, an expensive, good headset with noise cancelling. But mm. some people told me, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that with a headset like that. So no tricks, right? I switch it off. It's off now. There's no light. Mm -hmm. yeah? You listen to the headset. I put on the glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you tell me if you can hear the difference between the two different modes. Okay, sure. Yeah? If you're kind enough to look the other way, because you should look that way, because we shouldn't be too close. And now I have the glasses on and you hear me talking, but I'm not sure how well you hear me. Now I'm going to turn them around and I do it one more time. You have to tell me whether it's better or worse. 
And I've turned the glasses around and we can hear any difference. Very, uh, very loud now. So, very loud. So there's a big difference. Huge. Huge difference. So there is evidence that this one makes a beam, these microphones make a beam downwards. Now, one second. Before it was very, it became very loud. So what did you... Yes. So the only thing I did, I had the microphone fir uh, first like this. Yeah. And then they did it like this. That was the only thing I did. Honestly, yeah, he saw it and he put it on video. Okay. And we have four microphones. This one, this one, this one and this one. Okay. So normal, in normal circumstances, the microphone would just pick up sound from here, from here, from here. And this one from here, here mm -hmm. and here. Mm -hmm. So it would be roughly like a circle. So it wouldn't make any difference how I hold this. All right. But how do you change that? The software yes. or what? Yeah, it's software. We use a, a solution with a DSP. It's a, you see the SIM card style thingy? In the middle there is a black little piece. That's our chip. So and the chip calculates and makes this beam downwards. What, what can this be used for in the future? Um, this is used for instance um, when you are um, using a tablet. And um, let's say you're in the living room and two people are talking to each other. A third one is watching TV and you are Skyping with your family on a tablet. You don't want to, to hear all, pick up all the other noises, you just want to focus on this. So that's one application. This is another application. So but this, this, is, this will be here on the, on the headphone? Where, where will this be? No, it doesn't matter. I only use a headset here ah. um, for the reason that, you know, now you can hear me talking and you shouldn't because you should hear it through this solution. Ah. So this for instance a Skype application or for so telephony. Now, now I have an excuse to my wife that uh, I couldn't yeah. hear you. Yeah. <laughs> She's not wearing yeah. the glasses correctly. <laughs> yeah. But this, this is a good uh, application because you can imagine when we, when we go to these glasses applications, where do you leave the microphones? It's a big question and it makes a big difference where you leave them. Not only the location but also the algorithms. And that's what we try to show here. So there's so noise cancelling for microphones? Yes, so it's kind of. Targeted. Yeah. But the in theory, you could have it in a tablet? It is beam forming. Beam former. In, th in theory, you could have it in a tablet, a bunch Microphone. of microphones, yeah. several microphones, yeah. and then the camera will see where the person is and only record from that place. No, the camera doesn't know. The microphones no figure it out. The microphones figure it out? Yeah. So you tell the microphones what the beam is, where, which direction it is. In this case, we tuned it for glasses and it's only down. Okay. Um, with a telephone, you see sometimes people talking in a telephone like this. I don't know if you ever see that. Yeah. That's not good. It doesn't help you. The microphones are tuned to talk like this. So if you have beam forming on the phone, talk like normal like the phone is made. Don't look like this. It doesn't make the sound better. All right, so lots of things going on with the uh, yeah. dialog. Uh, yeah. How big is dialog semiconductor? How many people? Are... We have about uh, a thousand people now in the Where? company. Um, we are based in mainly in Germany and in the UK, with sites in uh, Swindon, in uh, Scotland, in Edinburgh, uh, several locations in Germany. But we also have sites in, uh, in the US, um, in Singapore, in Taiwan, in China, in uh, Turkey, in Italy. Um, so you're doing sensors and many things? We do many different things. Um, we are the most famous for power management, so management of the power in uh, telephones and tablets, portable applications with batteries. Um, but we also, as we show here, do a lot of other things. And we show here the other things to, to, to make people aware that we not just do power management, that we are quite a broad company.